on the ninth day of October, Halloween gave to me nine seagulls pecking, eight scientists sneaking, seven gold ones shooting, six psychic scamming, five naked witches, four alien spelunking, three UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. <laughs> Hey there, everyone. Welcome to uh, the second week, or we're into the second week now of our 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, it is, uh, if you're listening to this when it airs, a Sunday morning. As this uh, drops, I will be getting on a plane, uh, and so I will be out of the loop for about the next week or so. Uh, but that should not stop you from listening every day to these episodes as they drop. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to both be on vacation during the Halloween season. I'm actually taking uh, a Disney cruise uh, like I did earlier in the year. But this time, folks, uh, we're going with the kids. And it's a Halloween-themed cruise. And I've got a costume and everything. It's going to be ridiculous. So <laughs> we're doing that uh, and taking the kids to uh, the like Mickey's Haunted Halloween deal and stuff like that at Disney World. They've never been. They're going to have a blast. I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, so, uh, as you're listening to this, I'm in the midst of vacationing with children, uh, which how could that go wrong? Right? Like kids are a delight all the time and they're never moody or pissy or just total nightmares to deal with. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed they handle this all right, but, uh, that's not why you're here. You are here because we were talking about classic horror movies. We're in our run of, uh, of classic films and that begins today with this episode. And we are, of course, starting with a Stone Cold classic in the form of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Uh, and man, man, oh man, what a terrific movie The Birds is. This, as we've talked about a number of times in these episodes, they all fall into kind of one of three categories. There are movies I haven't seen. There are movies that uh, I haven't seen in a while. And then just movies that I feel like this time of year you need to watch. And The Invisible Man, uh, which we talked about last episode, was one I hadn't seen in a while. And The Birds falls into that same category, too, of a movie that I hadn't seen in years, years and years and years. Uh, probably a solid 15 years since the last time I, I watched The Birds. And the thing I was struck by in watching the movie again is how bleak or beak, perhaps, uh, the movie is. And... I, I don't know that I ever appreciated that aspect of it before, but if you've never seen the birds, the whole premise is essentially, Hey, Tippy Hedren plays a woman who runs into Rod Taylor. They have sort of a, a, a backstory of him being an attorney and, and she was in court at one point and he doesn't really remember her, but she remembers him and they have a little bit of a flirtation and she ends up following him to Bodega Bay, the, uh, the place that he retires to on the weekends where he lives with uh, his little girl and his mother. And, um, you know, there's a lady in town, uh, what is a school teacher that seems to be interested in him, but he's not really interested in her. And there's, so there are these underlying dramas and Tip Tippy Hedren just bombs in on the whole situation to make everyone uncomfortable like the mom doesn't like her, the teacher doesn't really like her, but also doesn't dislike her. And Rod Taylor, uh, through it all, Rod Taylor, if you, if you don't know who he is, he was in the, uh, the original, uh, the time machine. Um, and a good solid actor of that era of that, you know, 50s, 60s, uh, kind of era. And, you know, he's just the, the typical playboy type, the professional guy, um, who, you know, wanders through all of this situation and he's, you know, if there is one flaw to the birds, it may just be that Rod Taylor's character doesn't do a whole lot. He's just kind of there as a witness and Tippy Hedren is too. I mean, the whole town is really, but, uh, she seems to have more stake in the goings on or at least more reaction to it. Uh, and, and is just wonderful, but that's the the premise, right? Like she goes to this town, Bodega Bay, all of a sudden birds start attacking people. Uh, at first it's not super serious, but it's uncomfortable. And then the next thing you know, it's just all out mayhem. 
and uh, the so the thing that I I really uh, embraced this time around with the birds is that a there's no explanation. You know, there there's a terrific scene, probably my favorite scene of the movie in which uh, following an attack of the birds, the titular birds on a bunch of children, which is kind of wonderful that Hitchcock just has these, you know, seagulls and, and blackbirds uh, just rip up uh, a, a bunch of running kids, which is a lot of fun uh, to the point like they're just laying on the ground and birds are pecking at them and Tippi Hedren has to shoo the birds away so that they don't just eat these children. It's, it's dark. Like, this is a dark, dark movie, more so than I ever really appreciated before. And, uh, but, but after that, Tippi Hedren retires to the local cafe where a bunch of the locals are kind of debating what's going on. And you have the, you know, so the, the tropes that we're familiar with now. You have the guy that believes this is all biblical and a woman who's an ornithologist who's like, birds don't act like this. You know, flocks of birds certainly don't work together and they don't work as, a community to achieve one goal and they certainly don't attack people on Moss. and Tibby Hedren is uh, pretty certain uh, that they do because it just happened to her and then you know you have this woman who is just wants to go home wants to be escorted home uh, and it, it feels very much like Darabont's riff uh, of this scene is in the mist where, you know, once the mist rolls in and everybody's kind of wondering what's going on, and, you know, uh, the guy comes running and screaming from the mist, like, don't go out there, don't go out there. And everybody's sort of debating what to do. And Darabont clearly was not just influence, he just took the scene from the birds, where they're having the same kinds of discussions, whether it's the religious implications of this, the denial of it, the, the more grounded sense of panic of, well, if this is the case, we need to do something, but what do we do? And all of this leads to the bigger attack, which is sort of the centerpiece of the film where the birds bomb in on Bodega Bay and you have explosions and it's got that terrific scene with, uh, Tippi Hedren in the phone booth, which if you're of a certain age, you probably don't know what that is, but it was a glass, rectangle that had a public phone in it and you could close the door and that's where Tippy Hedren is as these birds are attacking and pecking at the glass and uh, and that I think is one of the most disturbing things in the whole movie is is when they're pecking at the holes in, that they're making in the glass and just doing their level best to get inside and, and to kill her and there's a guy that runs by all bloody and whatnot and you know, it's uh, like, again, one of those just absolutely terrific scenes. There has been much made of uh, one shot in particular, which is sort of a bird's eye view of the town on fire as the birds begin to swoop in on it. And it's a terrific shot. It, you know, it's a stone cold classic of, of horror cinema, uh, as is this whole movie. And the thing I really wanted to talk about in talking about the birds, because it, it is a classic, you should absolutely see it. If you've never seen the birds, do yourself a favor and watch the birds. If you have seen the birds and it's been a while, do yourself another favor and, and watch it again. It's terrific. But the, the thing I, I, I sort of wanted to drill down on when watching the birds this time is that this movie is absolutely elevated uh, of course, by the direction of Alfred Hitchcock. And this movie absolutely would not work. It would just be another creature feature, not dissimilar from the beginning of the end or it conquered the world or whatever, you know, uh, movies that came out in the late fifties and early sixties that were all these apocalypse movies. And usually it had something to do with radiation and that kind of thing. Like Hitchcock doesn't even bother in this film to even pretend to pose an idea of why the birds are doing this. It's just this notion of, Hey, perhaps w that what would happen if the bird suddenly turned on us and, and the ornithologist is like, well, if that ever happened, we'd be doomed because there are way more of them than there are of us. And you know, we'd just be good old fashioned screwed. 
which is a, a really fascinating <laughs> take on the idea. You know, it's sort of, uh, I'm a big fan of the movie Phase 4 that is, is, is sort of in that vein of if nature suddenly decided uh, to, to turn on us, there's not much we could do as a species. You know, the idea plays out in things like Day of the Animals or um, uh, Nature's Grave, and uh, there's a remake of that, or maybe I'm getting that reverse where Nature's Grave was the name of the remake about the family uh, in Australia that goes uh, on a beach holiday and ends up fighting for their lives against uh, animals. I wrote one of my own. I wrote a, a screenplay years ago called Beasts of the Earth that was very much about that. Like, what if animals just decided we were back on the menu? And if, if that ever happened, not much we could do, you know? And so the idea is, is terrifying in, a, in and of itself, but it takes a director like Hitchcock to really make it sing or soar <laughs> is probably the way to put it when we're talking about the birds. And there's a, a great moment before the birds attack the, the school kids where Tippi Hedren is outside the school. She's waiting for uh, the class to let out and they're singing inside and she's lighting up a smoke and having a cigarette and she looks over and she sees a, uh, a, a jungle gym, uh, you know, set outside the school and birds are slowly gathering on it. And every time the camera looks back to see that there are more birds there, there's also an increase in the volume of the kids singing and Tibby Hedren getting more and more upset as this all comes down to the point where eventually she goes inside and is like, Hey, we got to get the kids out of here. These birds are, are uh, massing outside, but it's just a, a wonderfully uh, brilliantly orchestrated moment of suspense as the music is rising, the birds are gathering, we know that they're dangerous now. And Tippi Hedren reacting to all of this. And it's it's terrific. You know, it's, it's what makes this movie great. And it's what separates this from something like Birdemic, you know, which is, it's unfair to compare uh, the director of that to Al Alfred Hitchcock. But that is what makes the difference, right? I mean, not just the material, but... Hitchcock was famously this very precise director, knew how to orchestrate these uh, the the suspense scenes, and The Birds is evidence of just how masterful he really was in doing that. There's there are a number of scenes throughout the movie where he just knows exactly how to you know twist the knife uh, on the viewer. I, you know, I think the movie works. Like one of the complaints that you can levy against the film in a modern context is that the bird effects are sometimes um, a little lacking, you know, like they're composite shots. And sometimes you can see the borders of those composite shots uh, and composite images very clearly. Sometimes it's very obvious that, you know, people are just running around with stuffed birds attached to them. Um, but I, I think that really misses the forest for the trees. And I, I'm not saying that when you're watching it, you're not going to mentally take note of, hey, that effect isn't as good and, and, and isn't what I remember most from the birds. And that's fine. It's totally fine to have that reaction to some of those shots. I think the disappointment would be if you allow that to just drain any enjoyment at all out of the birds, because I think it's just a, a tremendous film. And... Some of the effects don't hold up that well, but it was, you know, 1963. This movie is almost 60 years old and it still manages to unnerve. And that gets to the end of the movie, which is, is the thing I, I most wanted to talk about because I sort of had a memory of the end of this movie being them walking through uh, this field of birds, which does happen after Tippi Hedren is attacked in the, uh, uh, in the attic by a bunch of birds. And, and by the way, a quick side note, if you haven't seen Alfred Hitchcock and the women or the, or the girl, maybe it was just called the girl, uh, but it's the relationship between Tippi Hedren and Alfred Hitchcock. You absolutely should Toby Jones as, uh, as Alfred Hitchcock and his unhealthy relationship as he was a bit put, put off by the fact that Grace Kelly left him. Um, they, they didn't have a romantic relationship or anything, but 
that was kind of his ingenue, his inspiration. And she ran off to be a princess, a real life princess of Monaco. And so Hitchcock was looking for his next Grace Kelly and found Tippi Hedren in like a shampoo commercial or something. And so he was going to make a star out of her. But she was also strong-willed enough that she didn't want to just be Hitchcock's girl. And part of that story is that when they were filming the attic scene, they were just hurling birds at her. And she was psychologically and physically battered at the end of a very long day of shooting where Hitchcock just tortured her. It, it's really something. And you can kind of see it on the screen when you see her stagger out of that attic. It, it's very clear that she is at the end of her rope. And uh, another pretty good Hitchcock movie is rope. Uh, but uh, so all that happens at the end of the movie, they, you know, they're leaving the house to try to get somewhere safe and they're leading Tippy Hedren out who has this great reaction when she realizes they're about to go outside where she's just psychologically checked out. Like she has had it uh, and is not in a great place mentally. She's going to need years and years of therapy to get, get over this uh, situation. But you also get a moment where they get in the car and the radio is on and you start to hear reports about how Bodega Bay has been cordoned off, but they're starting to get reports further inland of these birds attacking, which suggests that, oh, not only is this continuing, but it's spreading. And I, I had kind of forgotten in this movie that it ends with a suggestion that the world may wear, very well be coming to an end. You know, that if the birds do continue their assaults, then we're all done for, or we're certainly living uh, back in the caves in a very, very different kind of existence. And it really hit home. You know, I found it really eerie and unsettling, uh, the, this go around. And maybe it's just because as an older viewer, uh, as I am now, you know, I was paying a bit more attention to, you know, things like theme and dramatics and so forth. And coming away from this movie thinking like, oh, this was Hitchcock saying like, we're all screwed. You know, like there is no hope uh, at the end of this movie. There's there's a hope that our survivors might continue to survive, but there's very little hope that the horror is going to end. And that in fact, it may just continue and get worse. And that's something that I find uh, very dread inducing. I think The Birds is, I, again, just masterfully directed uh, wonderfully written, uh, wonderfully executed. It's, you know, the reason we're talking about it in the classic section, it's a classic. And, uh, and I was so happy to go back and revisit it and, and find so much, um, in the material and so much in the execution of that material to really enjoy and, and chew on and, and adore. Um, side note, uh, of, of, again, uh, which we've been doing a lot in this episode, but, uh, there was a sequel to the birds in 1994, uh, some 30 years later, and it was called The Birds 2, Land's End, directed by our pal Rick Rosenthal, who directed Halloween 2, and also appears in the movie I wrote, Lost After Dark, uh, as the sheriff in a bit part. And uh, yeah, and, and Tippi Hedren goes back to, you know, reprise her role. Uh, I don't know that she's in it a ton. I don't think I've ever seen it. It, it is not well regarded as considered a really unfortunate uh, addition to the canon. And Tippi Hedren herself apparently is embarrassed, according to the good people at IMDb. They, they say she is uh, embarrassed by her involvement with the film. And yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know that I would have much interest in visiting, visiting that movie other than as a curiosity. But, eh, you know, James Naughton's in it uh, from American Werewolf in London fame. Uh, or no, Cat's Eye. That's, I'm thinking of David Naughton. James Naughton uh, is uh, uh, a different guy. Um, so, anyway, that is The Birds. Uh, don't see The Birds 2, Land's End. Um, mostly because it doesn't have the guy from American Werewolf in it. Uh, even though I, I thought it did for about two seconds. So, uh, that is day nine of the 30 days or 31 days of Halloween. Oh, I'm trying to short us a day people. Um, so I, I hope you got something out of that. I certainly did. I love the birds. We got more classic horror movies on the way. 
if you were listening to this on the uh, Dark Parade feed, uh, I encourage you to uh, hop over to the podcatcher of your choice and be sure you are subscribing also to the Legion podcast feed where this also appears. And if you're listening to Le the Legion podcast feed, I encourage you to uh, jump over to uh, the Dark Parade, uh, which is where I do a weekly show uh, over there. So with the exception of the month of October, because one of these is dropping every day, we're not doing weekly stuff because we're doing daily stuff. So uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. So uh, that'll do it this time. It is uh, a beautiful, one hopes, uh, Sunday uh, afternoon here uh, as this drops. Uh, by all means, go out there unto the world and be as spooky as you can be. We are, what, 22 days away from the big day. So enjoy it, savor it. Uh, the, the weather is turning cool. The leaves are, are changing and falling. And it's just the best time of year. So thanks for listening. I will see you tomorrow for the 10th day of the 31 days of Halloween here on Legion Podcast. See you then.